Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome here in studio, and we're talking sports with Val again here for uh, the first show of November. And we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. We're going to wrap up the cross country season. The state uh, meet was last Saturday. We're going to talk some football sectionals. And then we've got a lot of girls' basketball stuff we're going to talk about here as we move on through this week's episode of Talking Sports with Val. Val joins me, of course, as always here. Can't have Talking Sports without him. How are you doing today? Well, a lot going on and kind of uh, the our worlds are colliding. In fact, at Carroll tomorrow night, girls' basketball game at 5.30, varsity only. Uh-huh. Carroll against Northwestern, a game a lot of people are looking forward to. Northwestern with Layden, uh-huh. Carroll with Harness and those girls. Yeah. That's at 5.30, varsity only. And then after that game's over, you can just walk right across the parking lot, watch the Carroll football team play Clinton Prairie in the sectional final. Wow. And that, that should be a really good basketball game. I saw those two uh, teams meet up in the summer at Lewis Cass, and it was a, it was a battle. Mm-hmm. Uh, Carroll had Northwestern down most of the game. Northwestern able to come back and pull out the win there. The summer league course doesn't really matter who won that one. The big one's going to be coming up tomorrow. And what a way to start off the season for uh, for Carroll against a uh, very good Northwestern team. Carroll already has a win over Frankfurt the other night. Yeah. Uh, Allie Harness scored 26, and the girl that we saw last year that we've been – I, I, I really liked. I don't know. I'm sure you did too. Lainey Johnson. She had 17 last night. She had kind of her breakout performance in last year's sectional game, even though they lost. And she had 17 last night. So wow. I saw Coach Wiles. I read an article about them. He's been talking about we got to play better defense, mm-hmm. and they held Frankfurt to 28 points. So yeah. and Harness had 26 by herself. So wow, that that should be a pretty. That's a pretty good omen. Well, we'll get uh, we'll get into more uh, girls basketball, right. and then the other big news: Drake yeah. Drake Bowen, linebacker from Andrean, committed to Notre Dame last night. So right. he and Jack Kaiser will be teammates. And of course, Drake Bowen is the five-star linebacker, picked Notre Dame over Clemson and Auburn. Yeah, and he was the one who threw that ill-fated pass on a fake punt that might have been the key play in last year's regional game. <laughs> right, and now he and Jack will be teammates. Right, and uh, possibly it looked like maybe he's going to be playing some baseball there as well. He uh, his his announcement page. I, I know he's a really good baseball. Yeah, his player announcement page read. had football and it had a picture of him with a Notre Dame baseball uniform on mm-hmm. too. And I heard there was that possibility, mm-hmm. so that you know would be really really neat too. So we'll get into more of that as we uh, move on. Let's start off as uh, the cross country uh, state meet was last Saturday. We only had one. I won't say only had one, but we had one participant uh, from the area in the state meet. And that was Madeline Callaway. Uh, tell us a little bit about how she did and yeah, uh, how that went. Madeline ran a 20-23. She finished 106th out of 205 runners, so squarely in the middle of the pack. Mm-hmm. Uh, looking at the times, it appeared to be a slow race. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lily Cridge of Chittard won it. Her her time was about 30 seconds slower than her semi-state time. Uh, Karina James from Lowell, who won the New Prairie semi-state, finished 7th at state. Uh, her time was about 35 seconds slower than her semi-state time. From what we heard, the course was... Well, pretty muddy, mm-hmm. and just as it all was at all those football fields of the area. So, sure, a lot of times are slow. If you look at Madeline's career at state, she ran 1858 and finished 30th place two years ago, 1937 around 70th place last year, and then 2023 around 100 uh, 106th place this year. So, again, I think that's that's probably a good sign that the course was probably not as fast as maybe it was a year or two ago, and maybe the rains had some impact. And, uh, you know, with her getting started so late with the injuries and everything, you kind of run into a wall as a, as a runner about mid-season, mm-hmm. it seems like a lot of times. Do you think that she kind of hit that wall a little bit maybe too? Uh, I haven't talked to her, so I, I, I would just be speculating. Uh, I kind of thought that maybe getting up to a late start to the season might actually be a little bit of a help to her because mm-hmm. maybe she'd have more juice, mm-hmm. you know, by the end of the season, but... You know, I haven't talked to her, so I, I wouldn't want to assume anything. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, the, the big story, of, not not quite in our area, but McKenna Light of Lewis Cass, 20, sure. 28th place. Yeah. And she imp- almost nobody did faster at state than at semi-state. She did. She right. improved her state time by 20 seconds from her semi-state time. Right, yeah. I remember, and... Ma- Madeline had beaten her yeah. at, at semi-state, beat her by about 13 seconds. This time, McKenna beat Madeline by about 55 seconds. Yeah. So a great, great run for her. And, yeah. you know, great career for, for Madeline in, in cross country, obviously making it to state three out of the four years. And, you know, we're still going to get a chance to see her run this spring, you know, for track. And mm-hmm. really looking forward to seeing how uh, these distance runners for Rochester on both sides of the 
you know, boys and girls, you know, how they translate into the track and what they can do again, you know, this spring. They they had some success last year as well. Right, Rochester's the reigning TRC champ in both boys and girls track as well mm-hmm. as boys and girls cross country. So a lot of people run fast at Rochester. And uh, check the website too, rtc4.com. I wrote about 2,500 words on Madeline mm-hmm. about her rehab, about what it's what the anti-gravity treadmill was like in her rehab from a stress fracture and kind of how she kind of came to cross country, which was kind of, again, it's funny. I mean, we talk, you know, there's all this talk. We always talk about, boy, this this person was kind of born to do this or born to do that. It started with Elena Bodie saying, hey, Malin, why don't you try out for the cross country team in seventh grade? Right. Yeah, it wasn't like she, uh, yeah, was a natural at it, but when she started, yeah, it was. Yeah. So... And she, and she, yeah, she just got really good. I mean, she had done, she tried different sports before. She said she tried basketball, which is, again, interesting because Madeline's four feet 11. Oh, right. But, yeah. but again, it's, hey, I mean, it, it was kind of an organic process. Well, I, I wasn't good at basketball, so I wanted to try, but I wanted to try something else. Mm-hmm. And she had done gymnastics before, and, and I think we've talked about gymnastics being kind of a gateway sport to other sports, and mm-hmm. it was for Madeline. Yeah. Well, we're looking forward to seeing what she does this spring and, uh, you know, finishing off her senior year. And congratulations for making uh, state, you know, three out of your four years. So um, let's let's slide over and let's uh, let's talk a little football. Mm-hmm. The uh, sectional semifinal round, we had four games on RTC TV4 in our family of networks last week. And uh, I don't know, were we bad luck? Because the the two games that we were at, uh, both of our teams lost. The two games that we weren't at, both of the teams won. And uh, you were over at Winnemac with the uh, the crew over there, and, and jumped in on that one. And um, go ahead and just tell us a little. I'll just let you kind of give the synopsis of what happened there with Winnemac and North Judson. Well, I got there about uh, twenty minutes to half an hour before the game started, and I looked at the field. I was like, Have they already played the game? I mean, it was the field, that bad already. It, it looked ripped up all over. The field looked ripped up already. Mm-hmm. And it just got worse by the by the by the end of the first quarter. You couldn't read the numbers on the North Judson jerseys players. They were all just caked in mud. North Judson seemed, you know, that again it was it was interesting. I think there was kind of this assumption that we were going to have that this low scoring defensive battle. I mean, it was fourteen to eight in last year's sectional, and it, it was this first touchdown was a big uh, it was a big play. I think they scored on fourth and goal. Uh, North Judson's. Uh, Cheyenne Allen was just a big time player. I think we had talked about him earlier in the year mm-hmm. against Valley about about what a good athlete he was, and mm-hmm. North Judson really relied on him. They, they they put the ball in his hands and, and said, "Go make some plays for us." And um, but again, Winnemac, I mean, they kind of matched North Judson big play for big play. Bo Brant's touchdown, and we're going to see that. That was an incredible play. He just yanked the ball out of Aldrich Harper's hands and ran the other way with it. I think it was a 72-yard touchdown that tied the game 6-6. Um, then Judson goes up 13-6. to And then Winnemac gets a big pass play. Uh, I think about a 65-yard pass from Compton to Jaden Jones. And all of a sudden, we're tied again. And then Winnemac gets the ball back. And it looks like they're, you know, the, they're in position to maybe... There, there's that play where he uh, just ripped it and ran. Yeah, just said, I'll take that. Mm-hmm. And he just went the other way with it. But the big play is, and we're going to see that coming up, um, you know, about a minute to go in the first half. We're tied 13-13. And, and again, you, again, you're seeing how dirty the guys are. And, again, look at the footing, too. I mean, the footing was kind of treacherous at this point. But it seemed like Cheyenne Allen was a guy who could keep his feet, and he was very good at he could start outside and then cut back inside in the bad footing and, and keep mm-hmm. his feet. And that was, you know, that was not easy to do. Um yeah, this is the touchdown that made it uh, thirteen to six. Um, and then we're going to see the touchdown to Jaden Jones here. I think that I think ties the game. Um, but it was the interception returned for a touchdown by Aldrich Harper that gave North Judson a twenty to thirteen lead at halftime. And you know, Winnemac didn't score after that. I mean, that was you know that's a Winnemac offense that has been explosive all year. But I think they only got something like four first downs in the second half and. You know, Winnemac had four consecutive turnovers at one point. Interception, fumble, fumble, interception. Wow. And that you're, was just, you're not gonna you're not gonna win many games uh, with four yeah. turnovers. Now here's the touchdown pass, Compton to a wide open Jaden Jones over the top. Jaden's not tall, but he is fast. Mm-hmm. And that was the one that tied the game. 
and you're thinking, okay, we've got it, you know, all of a sudden we've got this kind of shootout that we, do, we weren't expecting. Um, and we see the replay here. Jane was, it, it's kind of like a wheel route. It looked like Jane wasn't necessarily lined up in the backfield. It looked like he was kind of in a, like a wingback position. And North Judson had a blown coverage, or at least they didn't account for him somehow. So that's a name that I, you know, I, I've done a little bit yeah. with Winnemac. That's a name I'm not real familiar with. Is he one of the seniors? He's or? a sophomore. He's a sophomore, okay. And he, uh, you know, he is a kid who Coach Hendricks just loves, and they've been kind of working at, you know, working him slowly into the lineup again when you've got so many seniors. Right. It's hard to get on the field. Yeah. But having said that, he's he's been getting about, you know, five to ten carries a game, and, and he's also a factor as a receiver, too, as you saw there. Mm hmm But it was... Um, again, it was it was just the turnovers, and um, you know Harper. You know we, we talked about him a lot as a quarterback. He's a big factor at that linebacker spot, and their linebackers are really good. I know we've talked about Benson too, and again, this is the play that's just again as Coach Hendricks sees it. If Brant, if Bo Brant, if that pass is a little bit higher, Bo Brant might be gone for a long way in the other direction. Right. And said Harper intercepts it and takes it all the way back for a touchdown. And all of a sudden, Winnemac, or North Judson leads 20 to 13, and that was just a devastating play. And, and when I'm talking with Coach Hendricks, he goes, "We had him, we had it set up. I mean, if you watch, you know, there's Benson, there's and there's Harper. Oh, yeah. they're, there's they're both in, yeah. They're both in there quick. If if the ball gets to Bo and he catches it, he's got a lot of room to run. But yeah. instead, it's Harper who makes a great adjustment to the ball and picks it off and goes the other way. That's one of them as a quarterback. You want to make sure if, if anything, you're going to throw it long uh, over his head. Yeah. But uh, you know, the the one thing that I really um, you know was interesting. You were talking about Coach Lambert. You know, a lot of times a coach, you know, I'm going to run to my right, or I'm not going to run to my left, mm -hmm. or I'm not going to run, you know, one way or the other. Yeah. He was not going to run towards the Win or the Winamax sideline oh, because yeah. of, uh, you know, he saw that side of the field was just so chewed up. So it didn't matter which way he was going, he was just not going to not gonna run to the west. Yeah. I, I walked down on the field after the game was over to get a – so what is this field really – it was just like a mudslide down the Winamax side. It was beyond awful. It was, yeah. It was crazy. And, and the, the, mm -hmm. the worst part is this yeah. right here, as bad as it is, yeah. isn't – some of what the worst that we saw on Friday night. I yeah. mean, I think South Adams Field is probably the uh, the worst one I saw. Yeah, that was the winner of the night, or the <laughs> yeah South Adams yeah. Monroe Central mm -hmm. and yeah, and then this play was big too. It was a fourth and one play, and Allen breaks a tackle and breaks it outside and goes in for a touchdown to make it twenty six thirteen. And all of a sudden, it's a two possession game, and Winamax the heat's on Winamax to stay in this game. And and again, this is just an uh, and I gives you an idea of how good. Cheyenne Allen is. I mean, it's just a combination of power and speed. And what what did you say in your story that it had been uh, North Judson basically owns Radebush Field? Yeah. I mean, they've, they've won, what, the last five meetings? Uh, the last four there and the last four sectional games there as well. Yeah. At, uh, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's really weird because it was a complete 180 from last year mm -hmm. where Judson was the favorite. They were playing at home. Mm -hmm. Winnemac comes into Liberty Field and beats them. Mm -hmm. And now this year, Winnemac is obviously the huge favorite. And Judson comes into yeah. Routabush Field and, and knocks off the Warriors. And here's another big play. Fourth and four. Everybody's expecting run. And Cheyenne Allen, who was lined up in kind of a, you think he's kind of maybe a protector, he just jumps out of the backfield and he's wide open for a touchdown. And and it, makes it, it makes it 33-13 to 13 with about two minutes to go in the third quarter. And now Winnemac's in real trouble. Yeah, if, if that wasn't the nail in the coffin there after already being up twenty six thirteen, I mean, that's a uh, that's a gutsy play there by Coach Lambert, and you know, it paid off big time mm -hmm. for him. Now, I don't know, you know, if I, I saw the last touchdown mm -hmm. with seconds winding down. Yeah. I mean, I know Tim and, and Shea weren't real thrilled with the with the play call there. You would kind of thought they were going to take a knee. What was the what was the thoughts? Anybody say anything, or they were just? I, I so, didn't hear anything from the Winnemac. You can people. see the yeah, you can see right here the time's running, winding down, and right. it's a second down. They could have very easily took a yeah, knee. Yeah, Coach there. Hendricks did have a time did have a timeout left, but uh, he wasn't doing anything to stop. He wasn't going to. Didn't seem like he was going to use it. He didn't. Yeah, yeah. But, do anything to use a timeout, and so he just took it in. I made it forty to thirteen. I guess you know as. Things go. I mean, it's a rivalry game, and I suppose you want to stick it to them as, as much as you can. But 
that just seems like one of those places where Judson maybe you could have just took a knee and, and let the clock wind down and and went on. But you know, that's 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 how rivalries uh, go, right? Yeah, yeah. So next time, you know, I'm sure when Winnemac, if they get an opportunity to to uh, return the favor, they probably will. Yeah. But again, the the big story of the game was North Judson really controlling the line of scrimmage, and they just seem to be they seem to have better footing mm-hmm. in, in the mud. And Coach Hendricks said after the game, he goes, "We didn't want to." He goes, "That was my biggest fear. We didn't want a game where we were just sloshing around in the mud all night. Mm-hmm. We, we feared that 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 would favor North Judson." And it, he kind of felt that Coach Hendricks kind of felt that they had more speed than North Judson, but when you get yeah. in a muddy track like that, it kind of takes yeah. away that advantage. They negated that and. North Judson wins forty to thirteen. Yeah, and they, they also did a great job. And Hayden Clark, you notice we didn't see many Hay- big Hayden Clark runs. And right. Hayden had, of course, five touchdowns the previous game against West Central. He was not a big factor. Yeah, in the they, offensive end. I bet, I bet they wish they would have made that phone call down to Brian Strong about twenty minutes sooner than they did. Yeah. So, and unfortunately, the undefeated season for the Winnemac Warriors comes to a close with the loss to North Judson. Uh, and you were you were there, and and you said it was. A good 45 minutes before you got a chance after the game to talk to Coach Hendricks. Uh, it was a, uh, I, I, it was at least half an hour. Yeah. yeah uh, and uh, but again, that's I, I'm not. I wasn't a, I wasn't on deadline. No. Uh, I, yeah. So but if, if I the uh, I, I guess where I was going was the emotions. You know, oh, with yeah. 22 seniors and an undefeated season and, and that loss. It, it was it was heavy. It yeah. was heavy stuff. I mean. Uh, because I was, you know, because I, I think I wrote about this, uh, and if you read my story, I mean, you know, Jackson Rodebush is still there on the field about, this is about 10.30, mm-hmm. and it's just him in his uniform, and he's just standing there, and he's just looking at the scoreboard. They turned off the scoreboard. Mm-hmm. There's nothing to see. He's just kind of yeah. standing there, just kind of, yeah. you know, I, I didn't want to know what was going through his mind, but uh, I could I could only imagine. There was an assistant coach there, just kind of had his arm around him, and just, they were just kind of standing I don't know if he was even saying anything at that point. Just mm-hmm. kind of looking at the scoreboard and just, yeah, like, like this because it just happened so quick. I mean, you've had mm-hmm. this great season. You're ranked number four in the state. You're undefeated, and yeah. just like that, it's over. Yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, anytime you know your career comes to a close, mm-hmm. it's always going to be tough. But especially, it's got to be even tougher when they were undefeated and and just really had aspirations of you know making a deep run. And, yeah. and you know North Judson just. Uh, it was their night, and I, I think the the field conditions probably played, like you said, into the favor of the Blue Jays. Yeah. So. Uh, but, but kudos to North Judson for dealing with it, though. Yeah. Let's let's move on over to Tippecanoe Valley. I was over there with the uh, with the crew at Valley, and you know, obviously, the weather conditions were not any different over there than they uh, than they were at uh, Winnemac and. Again, I think uh, a lot of this, you know, you, you, we there was a lot of talk about, you know, the strength of schedule with, mm-hmm. with Valley and the TRC. And, um, you know, Lusanga there, you saw him go in for the touchdown with the opening run. Um, he was able to make cuts in the mud yeah. better than Valley was. Uh, yeah. He was able to plant that foot. He was, you could see a couple of these runs here. He kind of did it a little gingerly. Um, and here's Wade Jones with a with an interception that uh, would have stopped or did stop a, uh, a Marion drive that really would have put the nail in the coffin for Valley early. 11th uh, interception of the season. But uh, Marion, I mean, they just had a here, – here's a, uh, a huge hit. Uh, Braden Shepard, I mean, just – and – that was a third down. They stopped them on fourth down. Valley gets the ball back, and it looked like they might have something going, and they put the ball on the ground. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mishawaka Marion recovers it a couple plays later. They're going to punch it in for the third score of the night. Uh, and it was, you know, just a little uh, here and a little there after that. But you can see, I mean, <laughs> look at the rain. It was like that all night long. It yeah. got so bad there, that camera angle, that camera, we ended up pulling it out. Uh, in the third quarter because it was starting to malfunction a little bit. And I'm like, uh, here's a big pass play to uh, to Durkus. It was 35 yards, one of the biggest plays of the night for Valley. Yeah, but Valley only had 55 yards passing for the entire game. They only had 20 yards outside of that one play. And they, they only had 34 yards yeah, rushing. Yeah, they only had 89, 89 yards of offense. <laughs> right. You know, it was, it was a little bit of everything. The one thing I, I really um, credit Mishawaka Marion 
uh, Valley was not able to get outside on them. And when Marion would turn them back to the inside, those linebackers, Sete, mm -hmm. uh, those guys in the middle there, I mean, were just, just, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I mean, they were just great linebackers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and there was nothing going up the middle. You couldn't throw the ball because of the weather conditions. Yeah. Uh, and so watching uh, the video of this game, the one guy who seemed to have good balance was Lusanga. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and you could mm -hmm. see I don't remember where it was. You mm -hmm. could see one I think it's coming up here where he makes a cut. He's going to his right, mm -hmm. and he very gingerly. You can tell mm -hmm. he kind of waits for to find a spot to plant his foot. But then when he does, and he cuts mm -hmm. it upfield, it was yeah. uh, there was that bizarre interception. It looked like it hit a Valley player in the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it and did. Somehow a Mishawaka Marion player. Picked it off. I didn't see who got that, but that was a great interception by them. And this was the touchdown run by Atkinson. And, you know, he was able to find a dry spot and make a nice cut. Yeah. You know, he was going outside. Um, this might be the one where I was thinking Lusanga because he, he kind of gingerly there, and then he was able to make that cut. He plants that foot in the mud somehow and uh, is able to go north and south. And, you know, like I said, you talk about the strength of schedule. Um, mm -hmm. You know, was that the issue? Two turnovers didn't help. The muddy field didn't help. I mean, if you play this on, on turf, I don't know that it ends any better because Marion, I mean, I'm sure they're just as fast. Yeah. I mean, it's just a, a matter they, of... They had scored 49 points in a turf field against South Bend, Washington, the previous sure, game. Sure, sure. Seven and three, and they play in the uh, big school division of the NIC. I mean, right. you know, that's that's impressive. Right. If you look at who they lost to, I mean, what, Mishawaka. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was two it was losses. A top ten team in 5A. Mm -hmm. uh, Penn. Yeah. And uh, I didn't see the other. Uh, CMA beat them, beat Mishawaka Marion, which was kind of a little bit of spread. But all three of their losses were to teams in higher classes. Yeah, and they were early, and the two of those losses were the first right. two games started of the season. O, started 0-2, and, and they finished out 7-1. Yeah, 8-1. Yeah, 8-1 after the, yeah. yeah. So, you know, Mishawaka Marion is going to advance. They they win the final 29-0 again, another, uh, you know, undefeated season. Tiffany Valley, you know, much like Winnemac, goes out earlier than they had hoped to, mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of seniors there. But there's... There's a lot of bright things to come for Tippecanoe Valley. Uh, you know, Coach Moriarty, he was talking to Tim and Rita after the game. And, you know, you hate to see those seniors go. Mm -hmm. But there's there's so many, you know, young kids. I think their 7th uh, and 8th grade teams only lost one game. Right. I was going to see if, any, if anybody knows the state of the middle school program at Valley. It's Stephen Moriarty. Right. I think his son is an 8th <laughs> right. grader. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Nate Parker was their leading rusher. Yeah. Not Virgil, not Shepard. It was Nate Parker who was leading score against Mishawaka Marion. Yeah. He'll be back. Yeah. And, of course, he comes from a family of Parkers, which means they're all tough and fast. Right. You know, so mm -hmm. you hate to see an undefeated yeah. season end like that, but uh, there's a lot of good things to come for Valley football. And the player the player development was something that was so impressed me. I mean, Rex Kirkenstein hadn't played football until his junior year in high school, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden he became an all-conference receiver and as dangerous a, a deep threat as there was. Mm -hmm. You know, Jameson Virgil, I mean... The, we knew he had potential, but my goodness, I had no idea he was this good. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the Southwood game, which he scored five touchdowns and capped it off with that kickoff return. The you know the the way these players develop that speaks well for the coaching that they yeah. they, they they can take individual players and turn them into their best selves, so to speak. I mean, mm -hmm. Branson McBriar, I had no idea he, that he was this good. I mean, I, I thought he was a wrestler, mm -hmm. and he is a wrestler, but he's he's a really good quarterback too, and his accuracy. Um, you know, Coach Weaver's offense has really now taken a hold there, and now instead of you know maybe trying to win games twenty-one to seven, they're winning games forty-two to seven, right? 50, Fifty-six to seven, right? So they have really become this offensive juggernaut, and they've always played good defense. And the commitment to the weight room and the, just the off-season commitment. Talking to those kids, I I really appreciated everything that goes into. You just don't wake up and go nine and zero, ten and zero. Right, right. It just doesn't happen that way. Yep. Yeah, great season for Coach Mo. Coach Mo, and yeah. uh, you know, be looking forward to seeing what happens. You know. And again, Valley is the smallest school in the state in Class Three A for football. Mm -hmm. So 
again, we don't know what these enrollment figures are going to be look like or how they're going to be re reclassified. I'm not even sure when they're going to be reclassified. Right. But if well, they, they go, if they if they wind up in two A, look out. Right. Yeah, that's you know that's been their one Achilles heel. Obviously, you know, getting through the regular season is is a big thing, but uh, just a, a brutal sectional. Right, and we've said this whenever they played a Mishawaka Marion or a South Bend St. Joe in this postseason. Every time mm -hmm. is that well, Valley plays a TRC schedule, and these teams play an NIC schedule where they're playing many more tougher opponents, higher mm -hmm. class opponents. Mm -hmm. Valley only plays one higher class opponent. Well, we'll see mm -hmm. in the season opener. Mm -hmm. Mishawaka Marion plays them almost every week. Right. Yep. So uh, let's let's move on down the uh, down the road. The one yeah. game that Again, not an excuse, but just that uh, that's just the truth. Sure. So how do you how do you overcome that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's a difference of being the uh, the biggest school in a uh, you know medium sized mm -hmm. school conference and right. being the smallest school in a big big school conference yeah. like Marion is. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Pioneer uh, gets their uh, gets the win over Delphi. They were playing at uh, Logan Sport, and uh, they win 18-0. And you know, you give credit to to Delphi. I mean, uh, yeah, Pioneer was was missing some players there on Friday night, mm -hmm. but uh, Delphi, you got to give them credit on their defensive side anyway, holding Pioneer to 18. They were they were very good. This was a big play because that was fourth and eight, and Pioneer gets a touchdown to Mersh, and that was a great look by and how and how good has... because he, he looks off his. That, I don't think Mersh was his number one target on that play, yeah. and he kind of looks off the first guy he's looking at, and all of a sudden he finds Mersh open. That was just a great play by Caleb. And, and how good has Mersh been over the last six games? He's been, I mean, yeah. <laughs> he just kind of came out of nowhere and, and has turned into a. That was not an easy catch either. Yeah, yeah, yeah kind of turning around and, mm -hmm. and behind him a little bit, and you know, Delphi was uh, you know seven and three coming into it. They were you know very serious contenders. They play in the in the Hoosier HCC, right? Hoosier, Hoosier Heartland Conference. HHC, and there's um, the sack in the end zone for a safety by that was at. Uh, I think that was at, was that Solano. I don't think that. Was. I think it was. It was Uncle mm -hmm. Uncle Low is. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Coach Barry calls them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so Delphi at seven and three. I mean, they had a nice schedule. I mean, they were beating some mm -hmm. some good teams. So it wasn't like they were coming in with a a week seven and three schedule. And you know, they they gave Pioneer. I mean, everything that they wanted. And I give credit to the Panthers with uh, you know without uh, Robinson they didn't have Legrand they didn't have Toloza mm -hmm. there was, was there somebody else or was that the the three main those ones? were the three main ones yeah. yeah so I mean those are those are some pretty big pieces uh, and we don't know for sure we think that Legrand will be back this week I'm not sure about Robinson's status it's kind of a day to day he's, he's thing. questionable yeah he's yeah. still day to day Toloza they're pretty confident that he will be back against yeah. Laville yeah. And, you know, the guy we need to talk about is Seth Schmel. Yeah, uh, I saw that. Four different Pioneer running backs have run for over 100 yards in this so far in this at one point in this season. Yeah. Toloza, Hill, Robinson, and Mersh. Seth Schmel was Pioneer's leading rusher. He didn't have 100, but he had 84 uh -huh. against a team that was playing its heart out defensively. Yeah, and he had a touchdown run too, right? Yeah, yeah. and he had that touchdown run in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know much about him. Where where did uh, what year is he? Is he? He's a junior. A junior. And I know Coach uh, Barry had kind of talked. He talked about him kind of being in the mix of that spot, but mm -hmm. this was really a big time performance by him. Yeah. So Pioneer, after starting the year zero and two, mm -hmm. um, they went to Laville in week three and won that one twelve seven, and have not looked back. Have not lost a game yeah. since. And, and now the season's come full circle. Back to Laville this week and. You know they're nine and two. Laville is eight and two. Um, I was up there yesterday doing uh, pregame testing. Field doesn't look good. Um, it doesn't look terrible. I mean they've they've done a nice job of leveling it out. Uh, everything is flat. There's no holes, nothing like that. So it's not dangerous. But there's a lot of places where there's no grass anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, they they hosted Bremen last week and. Of course, you know anybody that hosted a game last week and has to host a game this week, unless they had turf, is going to be in the same situation. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean it, it's going to be different. But the uh, the forecast is dry, hopefully. Uh, 
Yeah. That's so if they don't get any rain and it keeps the way it is, it's not going to be a pretty field, but it should be a safe field. Yeah. So that that's going to be a big one. You know, the rematch of the game back in uh, September, you know, it was a, as you would expect with LaVille, it was a, a very tight uh, match and uh, score. But and Pioneer won twelve to seven. But Robinson played quarterback in that game. He's not sure. going to play quarterback in this game if he plays at all. Right. So th- this is going to be a whole other thing for Laville to have to prepare for, because who's going to get who's going to get the ball? We I mean we've talked about five different ball carriers. We possible <laughs> Robinson's back uh, now. He and he was a factor in last year's game mm-hmm. as a fullback. Right. But how will he be used? How will all these other Wing backs and tail backs be used, How, and Caleb Sweet seems to be more of a factor in the passing game this yeah. year than Caden Hill was oh, yeah. last year. So if you're Coach Hostrauser preparing for this game, it's totally different from preparing for last year's game. I, I, and I'm obviously the Llewellyn brothers, and I've been right, right, right. changes things too. But also, not, it's not even from the regular season game you played against. Them. Right, and you know, Bo Mersch has come into his own. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like you said, Caleb Sweet was not the quarterback. Um, yeah, you have to really, uh, and then, you know, the, the other thing, too, I think that we saw when we did the laville Rochester game is Laville is willing to throw the ball a little bit more than we've seen yeah. in the past. So, yeah. you know, where does Coach Barry go with their defense? And, you know, mm-hmm. if they have LeGrand back, obviously that's going to be huge mm-hmm. because their defense without LeGrand is, you know, they they need, you know, a lot of help. And But LeGrand, I mean, obviously is the is the key to that defense. And, you know, Solano, I mean, good gosh, that kid has just come along. You know, he's he's the defensive line yeah. is so solid with Solano. And mm-hmm. Speaking um, of developing players and coaching staffs developing players. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Valley, we talk about Valley, <laughs> Pioneer does pretty well too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, and it, you talk about next man up. Uh, you know, you hear that a lot, but, uh, you know, with Robinson going out and then, you know, you get a kid like Schmel coming in and, mm-hmm. and doing great things. You get a kid like Mersch coming in, uh, you know, and, and how how good has Caden Hill been? You know, we, I talked about it, I think, last week or the week before. You know, he could have put his head down and, and, you know, been pouty about not being quarterback anymore, but he didn't. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's he's been the uh, the consummate team player and, He's he's got a big role now on on both offense and defense. Yeah, he might be the one who's to cover Owen Smith mm-hmm. on Friday, and that that's going to be a big responsibility just on defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, Laville uh, has more of a passing threat than I think they did last year, mm-hmm. uh, and then Pioneer definitely has more of a passing threat than they did last year, and, and even earlier this year. So yeah. the, the defensive uh, defensively is going to be very interesting to see what kind of defensive game plan that Coach Barry and Coach Bianco and his and their staff comes up with because you have got to contain Plummer in the pocket. You can't let him get outside and mm-hmm. and make plays. Uh, Rochester w- had been pretty good at doing that against opposing quarterbacks, but Plummer is a different kind of athlete. And when, Plum- when Plummer got outside the pocket against Rochester, he makes things happen, yeah. whether on the ground or he's very good at rolling out and throwing off the run too. So I, I it's going to be an interesting. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. An interesting it? DeWitt. Is a guy who's really come on late. He was banged uh-huh. up earlier in the year. He's healthy now and he's running well. I saw. I, I, I didn't see video of the Bremen Laville game. I don't think there was video of it, but I saw some still photos of it. It was a slop fest. Sure. But man, for Laville to beat Bremen twice. Yeah. I mean, I I was not sure they could do that twice. They did fourteen to twelve in the regular season, fourteen to six last week. Yeah. And the now the question goes the other way: Can Pioneer beat Laville twice? Mm-hmm. It, it definitely isn't going to be a, a blowout like it was last year. I, I can guarantee you that. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, special teams always seems to get more and more important as you go along. Yeah. Again, Pioneer doesn't really have a place kicker, and Plummer right. is a pretty decent kicker for Laville. Yeah. So if it comes down to a, a field goal to win it. You know, obviously, Pioneer's not going to be able to do that. <laughs> they're yeah. not going to be. They're not going to. There's not going to be a field goal to win it for right. Pioneer. Right. So they're, they're going to have to make something happen on a fourth down play. I think. Yeah. Just but, as they did against uh, Delphi. Well, that'll be uh, that'll be a fun one there. Uh, John and Adam will have the call. We'll have the uh, Pioneer crew up there for that, and looking forward to that. The other game uh, that we're going to have on uh, tomorrow night is going to be Culver at Judson, the Culver Cavaliers. A little bit of a surprise, um, you know, coming in three and five with a uh, five and three South Central Satellites team. The uh, Satellites were winners of uh, five in a row, correct? 
right? They had won five in a row coming into the Culver game. And but boy, the and Culver gets off to kind of a bad start. They come in a turnover right away, but this was the play that turned around the whole momentum of the game. Counter to Ortiz, and Emiliano was gone, 71 yards. That is as perfectly executed a counter as you're going to see. If you, if you run the replay, watch the two running backs go left. The entire South Central defense goes to the right. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, it's just Ortiz and that one poor defender for South Central. He was alone on an island. Mm -hmm. And Emiliano just outran him to the sideline, and he was gone. Well, it's good to see his, uh, you know, hear his name because he's had a, a rough season. And yeah. He had not you know, had near as much success for the Cavaliers as he did last year. Mm -hmm. And, you know... I, I tell you what, I mean, this was a, uh, a South Central team as, when they came into this game. I mean, you know, they, they really put a hurt into Kasten, uh, 40, what, 42 points against Kasten? 40, 40 to 6. Yeah. Mean, yeah, and, you know, Culver shuts them out. And here's the stat that was uh, the one that really blew my mind, minus 5 minus yards, five yards rushing. rushing. And South Central had over 300 yards rushing against Caston. Yeah, I mean, they could have literally stayed on the bus and done better rushing yeah. than they did. I mean, The Hogan kid who had a monster game against Caston, I think 223 yards and four touchdowns, they shut him down completely. The Guevara kid, their big fullback, who's kind of their team leader, they he did not have a big impact on that game. And, boy... Um, you know, there are a couple kids we need to talk about about this Culver team that we haven't talked about this year. Ben Lee, the linebacker, four sacks. He was tremendous. Ian Brown was terrific, both offensively and defensively. Mm -hmm. uh, number 32, he's, he sees some time in the backfield, but he's also a good linebacker. Uh, he had to, I think they, there was a false start penalty, so they had to do the two-point conversion from the eight-yard line. But And I talked with Coach Mike Zaner the other day, and he said, I asked him just about your junior class in general, because it seems like we've talked a lot about the seniors with, Tucker Fisher, the two Zane, the two Zaner boys, Alex and Austin mm -hmm. uh, Evans. Um, we talked a lot about. We haven't talked much about their junior class, but I mean Ben Lee is a junior, Ian mm -hmm. Brown's a junior, mm -hmm. and of course Schumann, just a junior. He's just a junior. Mm -hmm. So all these juniors have really come into their own as the season has progressed. And you know that that the, the Hanshar kid, uh, the second touchdown came in a QB sneak here, and again that's when you're so worried about Schumann and the other guys. Mm -hmm. The QB sneak mm -hmm. can be effective from the one yard line. But those the, the maturation of those juniors, and they have really come in, and, and Ortiz is a junior too, so they're all coming along and getting healthy and playing their best football right now. Yeah. And, you know, this isn't really pertinent to the game, but I really like those uniforms. I, yeah. You yeah. know, they, they've had some, uh, some you know, some dogs in the past. I, I remember when they did the orange on orange there for a while. That was, was kind of hideous, but uh, yeah, I really like those gray. Yeah. yeah. And it worked out well for them too with the yeah. muddy field. Now watch the blocking on this touchdown. It's just a double lead, and it's going to be Thompson following two backs. Look at Schumann doesn't even know who to block. Or no, that's not the touchdown. Uh, but we're going to see it pretty soon. But they get, I think they had just, by this point, again, it's just a muddy field. South Central was done. I think South Central was just kind of ready to call it a night. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, I they, threw they, were a calling, they were calling timeouts at this point. I think this is the touchdown yeah, play yeah. here. And again, it's just a double lead. It's just Thompson just following his blockers. And watch Schumann just gets his guy out of the way untouched. And I talked with Coach Zaner, said Schumann had maybe his best game blocking wise. Mm hmm. Yeah, so. And that was the one that made it 18 to nothing. I talked with Mike Zaner earlier in the week there as they get ready for this North Judson game. I, he said that. Uh, the head coach from John Glenn stopped by to give him a pep, pep talk. Austin yeah. Faust, yeah. who of course played for Coach Zaner at Rochester. Yeah. Well, here's the here's the really interesting thing. You know, we talked about TRC and and you know how their uh, you know the, the the strength of the TRC is you know been questioned a little bit, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, there are six teams in the Hoosier North yeah. playing for sectional championships mm -hmm. this week. Guaranteed, we're going to have two sectional champions because yep. Pioneer is playing LaVille right. and Culver is playing North Judson. So we're going to have one out of each one of those. But you take away the top team, Winnemac, the bottom team, Cast, and everybody else in the conference is playing for a sectional <laughs> championship. Yeah, I was going to say, Win Winnemac was knocked out by another Hoosier North team. That's... Sure. Yeah, I mean... And and then you look at yeah. what uh, you look at what the Hoosier North has done mm -hmm. this year against the uh, TRC. You know, LaVille knocks out Rochester. Mm -hmm. 
Pioneer knocks out Wabash, and then Triton last week knocked out Northfield. Right, Triton was trailing that game going into the fourth quarter. I think trailing thirteen to six, came back to win twenty two to thirteen. Yeah. So yeah, I mean the Hoosier North is just playing great football. And how about the not you know Knox is kind of sure. a classic example of I mean, here's a team that was kind of lingering around the bottom of the standings, but here they are. They're still playing. They beat uh, what Calumet at home. They beat River Forest at home, and they get a third straight home game this week against Hanover Central. It's gonna be a tough one against a ten and one Hanover team, but. Yeah. You know they were three and six going into the postseason, and uh, if they can get this win, they'll be back to five hundred. I mean, you know, we yeah. talked about uh, how long had it been since Coach Radke had a, a, a losing season? Nineteen ninety, when he was at Connorsville. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a tough one to to get it back to five hundred against a ten and one Hanover team, but mm-hmm. you never know, and who knows what they could do. And yeah, and Triton is going to be at, at Adam Central. That's, that's a, yeah, that's, that's a tough a big, one. That's a big task. That, yeah, ten, Adam Central just trampled Southwood fifty six to nothing last week. Ten and one. Their only loss was to a really, really good East Side team. Mm-hmm. Uh, East Side, I think, plays Lures this week. Yep. So uh, you know that's going to be a good one. That's going to yeah. That's yeah. With all due respect to Pioneer and Laville, that's the game in the two eight North this week. Number, sure. Number four East Side and number two Fort Wayne Lures. Sure. Uh, so the only TRC team that's still alive is Peru. They're going to be hosting ten and one Norwell, so they're going to have their hands full there as well. Yeah, Norwell has been playing great football. Won by shutout last week. That's a Norwell team that's a pretty good traditional power. And mm-hmm. Peru hasn't won a sexual since 1982. We'll see if yeah. they can pull off the upset, but it's going to be a big task. You know, just just glad to see them playing because last year, you yeah. know, they they didn't even get a chance to play in the sectional. So. Yeah, and and just kudos to Coach St. Louis and his program. I mean. The, it used to be Peru was never known for their defense, mm-hmm. and he has kind of instituted kind of a defensive mindset there, and they made that big stop to beat Oak Hill in double overtime last week. Great win for them. Yep. So uh, coming up for you on uh, RTC tomorrow, we're going to have uh, Pioneer at LaVille, and then our Culver crew, uh, got to give them kudos too. Uh, Coach Justin Croy is also our uh, TV and uh, radio uh, teacher over at uh, Culver. Uh, they're going to go over and they're going to do the uh, Judson game. So their first road game, yeah. uh, they've been doing really well. You saw the, the clips, the highlights there. Uh, you know, Megan Pearl, who plays basketball for Culver, uh, has been... She, uh, she did a great job. She yeah. and Adam did a great job. A lot yeah. of enthusiasm. Uh, Tyler on the camera and uh, Adam Levette running the, uh, you know, calling the play-by-play. And So, yeah, they, they're going to go over and they're going to have that game for you at Judson. So that, that'll be an interesting one there. Culver at Judson. And uh, Pioneer at LaVille, uh, all Hoosier North uh, sectional championship. All Hoosier North all the time here on RTC. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back. We're going to talk some girls basketball, favorite time of year. Uh, girls basketball season kicked off earlier this week, but our teams will all be uh, in action uh, starting tonight and then moving on through uh, Pioneer playing on Saturday. So. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll talk in sports with Val. Thanks for joining us today. We'll be right back. New season at Timbercrest Senior Living Community, North Manchester. On a 104-acre campus with beautifully designed apartments, Timbercrest provides maintenance-free living for today's active seniors. Join a community where neighbors become friends. Get involved in an activity or club and let your passions follow you here. Restaurant dining is available or cook up something delicious in your own apartment. With multiple floor plans, let Timbercrest do the work while you enjoy doing the things you love. Call to schedule a visit today. The Winning Edge is your local provider for all your sport and school athletic needs. From providing customizable sportswear to engraving trophies, The Winning Edge strives to help teams find their edge on the playing field. Call 574-223-6090 or visit their website at www.thewinningedgeathletics.com. Community State Bank has maintained a tradition of service since opening our doors in May of 1930. For the past 90 years, we've been dedicated to developing personal relationships in all the communities we serve. Offering both personal and business accounts, Community State Bank is your local friend and neighbor. Stop by any of our local offices to set up your accounts today, online at csbnetbank.com. RTC Fiber Communications knows the internet is evolving, taking new twists and turns as we add our input, make our choices, and follow the light that connects us all. 
it's quite a journey. One to experience with the fastest speeds available. Contact RTC Fiber Communications. Connect to the internet speed that suits your journey. And enjoy the ride. Hello, I'm Harry Webb of Webb's Family Pharmacy. Were you one of nearly 7,000 patients we served last year? If not, I'd like to invite you to check out our locally owned pharmacies. Transferring your business is easy to do. Just one call and we'll take it from there. While our competitive prices are important, our success comes from our knowledgeable and compassionate staff. Make Webb's Family Pharmacy your pharmacy. Just one call and we'll take it from there. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> Hey, welcome back. Here we are talking sports with Val. We've uh, talked the uh, cross country through the uh, state meet and yeah, talked... a, couple, a couple more football notes just to get to. Uh, if Andrean beats Whiting, mm -hmm. then Andrean hosts the regional, right? Uh, no matter what. If uh, Culver beats uh, North Jetson, Culver would host Carroll, or they would play Clinton Prairie on the road. Okay. Well, there's there's probably not a whole lot of chance that Whiting is going to beat Andrean. I'm just not guessing. a whole lot of chance. Yeah, but if if Whiting did win, uh, and Pioneer beat Laville, then Pioneer would host the regional. Right, right. But if uh, if Andrean and Pioneer both win, it would be at Andrean. Yes, it would. Yep. So that'd be an interesting game rematch of uh, last year's regional. Mm -hmm. So. All right, uh, it is girls' basketball season, probably my favorite time of year. I like these two weeks here that we have before, you know, boys' practice starts next week, and uh, the girls kind of get the stage to their to themselves here for a couple weeks. Yeah, uh, we get to hunker down with the teams and really see what they've got going on. As yeah. uh, you know, kind of the boys' time is kind of at the end of the season in March yeah. right. when they get sectional week to themselves. But this is a fun time because you get to see who teams have and who's been who's been really working hard on their games during the off season. Really, really looking forward to it, you know, and, and like I said, you know, time and time again, I've got three daughters and, you know, as a, as a parent with three daughters, it, it just really, uh, over the years, you know, I, I've fallen in love with the girls game because I just feel like they just play fundamentally better basketball. Uh, the boys sometimes will get into the, you know, the bad habits and they can get away with them because they can, you know, use their athleticism maybe a little bit more to to get out of trouble. But I, I really love the a good girls basketball game. To me, is is much more fun to watch. And uh, speaking of good girls basketball games, Rochester opening up tonight. They will be at home against North Judson. And you know, last year uh, this was a barn burner over at North Judson. Of course, obviously, mm -hmm. no Lillian Frazier for the the Blue Jays, uh, no Coach Newbauer for the Blue Jays. Brand new head coach Bailey Goodman, and uh, you know, so we don't really know what to expect from the Blue Jays. They still have a Frazier, just mm -hmm. not Lily Frazier, Sophia Frazier. And you know, last time Bailey Goodman was in uh, Rochester High School's gym in uh, 2015, and uh, her Benton Central Bison lost to the Rochester Zebras in the regional, and I think they were number number one in the state. They were undefeated, and they were ranked number one in the state going into that game, yeah. Yeah, so uh, she uh, went on to play uh, four years at Purdue Northwest, and uh, last year she was the assistant coach up at IU South Bend and, and is the uh, first-year head coach for the Blue Jays. So you did all your, uh, you know, kind of preseason girls stories on uh, on the blog, and you got a chance to talk with uh, with Coach Jennings. They got a lot of uh, kids back from that core. Obviously, missing uh, Caitlin Rogers, who graduated, but a good core back of a, a team that has won back to back sectionals. And he's going to have a lot of lineup flexibility. He can go with the small lineup if he wants, with a lot of guards, with, you know, how to shell and Watson and Burkett and Sidney Hawes, mm -hmm. Riley Holloway. He can go with a big lineup with, you know, Millie Scorsone and, uh, you know, uh, he can put 
Kennedy Jackson in the post. Kennedy can play just about anywhere. Kennedy's mm -hmm. kind of the queen on the chessboard. I mean, she can play just about any spot. You know, mm -hmm. Millie Scorson and, of course, Lexi Thomas. Right. Uh, you know, Coach Coach Jennings just raved about the offseason that she had and, and, you know, about the leadership that she's shown. Uh, hard to imagine Lexi not being out there on the floor most of the time when good things happen, though. Yeah. Yeah, I think she's going to be in, whether they're in a big lineup or a small lineup, I think she's going to be on the floor pretty much all the yeah, time. Yeah, Lexi's just relentless out there, and mm -hmm. she's just, uh, you know, she's just going to keep playing mm -hmm. uh, no matter what. And so, uh, and again, the leadership that she's shown uh, with, with Caitlin Rogers moving on, I think it's going to be Lexi's, you know, everybody talks about Lexi and, and, and Cami Burkett being kind of uh, yin and yang. Mm -hmm. You know, Lexi's kind of the intense kind of, let's go, and Cammy's kind of the lighthearted one who makes kind of will we'll tell a joke just to kind of loosen the mo loosen the mood a little bit. Yeah, how excited is Coach Jennings about getting Cammy Burkett back? I mean, we saw her uh, miss a lot of time last year with a with a knee injury. Yeah, and uh, is she back in hundred percent? Yeah, you know, isn't it, isn't it, yeah, she's back. It's interesting talking about Cammy. She's like, you know, I don't need to score on this team. I just need to play really good defense. Yeah, that's what she talks about. Yeah, and so you see, you know. You, there's kind of this acceptance of the roles that w the, these kids talk about, and while while at the same time kind of improving their own skills. I mean, Kennedy Jackson talked about, yeah, I worked on my shooting because I know that teams are just gonna if they don't think I can shoot, then I've got to prove to them that I can. Um, and you know, I, I saw them play over the summer. I mean, Millie looked great. That was a, a scrimmage against Plymouth. Apparently, Plymouth had some some of their post players were not there that day, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, still, Millie looked just really good. I mean, she's just very, you know, she's she's not holding on to the, you know, I mean, she just gets it up and gets it quick off the board, and there's just nothing you can really do to stop it because she, I mean, she's six feet tall. Yeah, and, and the one thing you know we saw in the sectional last year mm -hmm. uh, more than I think we'd seen in the regular season with Kennedy Jackson was you know, Coach Jennings' willingness to put her out on the wing mm -hmm. and let her drive to the basket. And, um, yeah, every once in a while you're going to get somebody that will take a charge, but there's not going to be a lot of people that are going to be willing and wanting to uh, step in front of Kennedy Jackson if she's driving hard to the basket. Right, right. And, you know, there's so many there's so many ball handling options that if even if you try to trap the ball out of Emma Hodeshell's hands, well, Kennedy can help with the ball handling. Cammie Burkett can help. Mm -hmm. Callie Watson can even help a little bit with that. So, um, you, you know, so it, it, they're they're not going to be an easy team to press. Right. And obviously, we, we we talked a lot about the 2015 and 2016 teams with you know Becky and Alexa, and Allie, and those teams were impossible to press. Right. Just, you couldn't even <laughs> right. think. Just you couldn't even think about it. Right. This team's going to be. I don't know if this team's going to be that difficult to press, but they're going to be tough to press. Uh, you, you're going to have to be a really good pressing team if you want to 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 get some turnovers. Uh, or at least to, to make it a helter skelter. Um, you know, another thing that Coach Jennings is talking about is it's not necessarily about cutting down on our turnovers. It's about committing fewer turnovers than our opponent. Right. Yeah, I remember hearing that. Yeah. Yep. So th that's going to be big. And then, uh, you know, Emma Hodeschel, she's just talked about, you know, she's just worked on her shot. I talked about, uh, you know, she's, but she's also talked about, you know, doing like some jump stop moves and using the ball screen and then kind of, Using that to get a jump stop and then getting off her shot. So mm -hmm. I'll be curious to see how, kind of how the shots get distributed because you also want to get Riley Holloway some shots. She sure. is just a dead eye from three point range and and to see how she gets involved. You know, with Riley, um, you know, she, offensively, I don't think there are any worries about her. It's kind of defensively, okay, we got to get her to communicate, and this is how we communicate because mm -hmm. you know she's gonna, probably going to be playing more zone this year than probably she did. And right. Valley. Right. And you talk about ball handling, you know, you may re not remember, but Cammy was the, the point guard for a lot of the time as a freshman. Yeah. You know, when, when Emma was, you know, in eighth grade, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she she can handle the ball, and, and I like that she's willing to, you know, mm -hmm. be the defensive stopper because yeah. you've, we've, so many times, you know, you see those really, really good teams, you know. Argus when they went to state, you know they had uh, they had uh, Binkley, uh, you know mm -hmm. last year with Pioneer they had Joe Walker. I mean you got to have that one player that's just willing to stick their nose in there and yeah. just play defense, mm -hmm. and who and who's quick enough to handle whoever your quickest player is. Right, and then so that they can give you some different defensive looks, and then offensively it's kind of 
they need to find that third dimension of their offense. The first dimension is scoring in the post, mm -hmm. which they have with Millie and Lexi. Mm -hmm. The second dimension is being able to hit threes. They mm -hmm. have that with Emma and Callie and Riley. Mm -hmm. And Sid Hawes can even shoot from the outside. I mean, the, they're not the only ones. And then the third dimension is being able to drive the ball to the basket and mm -hmm. create up dri dribble penetration. Yeah. And that's Coach Jennings has talked about that. We'll see if they can do it. Because that, that's kind of that in-between game. is kind mm -hmm. of what they maybe were lacking at times. Yeah. So when you can break down an opposing team's defense off the dribble. Yeah. And we saw Kennedy able to do that a little bit. Um, but she's going to need, you know, you need your wings to be able to do a little bit of everything there. And, and so, you know, that would, that would be interesting if they can develop that. Right, yeah. To, for Kennedy to be able to drive to the basket, finish off the glass, you know, finish at the rim, that, that would be, boy, that to give them... That would just give them that third dimension, as I as I said. So, yeah, yeah. But I'll be I'll be curious to do it because this is a Judson team that, again, we don't know what it's going to be like with a new coach and without Lillian Frazier. But yeah, by the way, she scored twenty points the other night for Indiana Wesley. Did she? Yeah, yeah. including ten in overtime in a game they won in overtime. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. New coach. What is her defensive philosophy going to be like? Are they, is she going to try to get after defensively, or is she just going to sit back maybe in a zone, yeah. knowing that they're going to be giving up some height? Yeah. And I'm I'm really looking forward to uh, you know watching the JV as well for the uh, zebras. We probably won't see a lot of the younger kids on the varsity th mm -hmm. this year, which is mm -hmm. you know a, a luxury that Coach Jennings has that he doesn't have to play those girls. But I really am looking forward to seeing you know because they're going to be obviously the next group coming up, and there's some really good talent on there yeah, as well. Yeah, girls like Riley Clevenger and uh, uh, Ella McCarter mm -hmm. and uh, Sydney Lamb. Mm -hmm. Audrey Bollinger, mm -hmm. uh, these girls are promising. Yeah, yeah. They, play, they played a lot of summer basketball as well. You know, Phil Bowers is Dar Dar the Dar Strasser. Sure, yeah. Phil Bowers is the uh, the coach now for the JV. He was uh, you know a junior high coach and actually coached those girls uh, a lot of them in junior high. And so uh, really looking forward to uh, to that. They'll we'll have both games on for yeah. you tonight. That explains why there's no coffee available in any grocery store in Rochester. <laughs> Phil has bought it all. He's <laughs> down in all the coffee. Yeah, but uh, you know, he's he's funny because you know he takes it so seriously, and and he does. He gets a little a little wired up, but uh, you know, he he knows the game, mm -hmm. uh, and he definitely uh, knows how to get the uh, the best out of them. Yeah, and uh, so I'm really looking forward to it, um, and you know. If you want to look down the road on Saturday, you know they're going to be uh, heading down State Road 25. Big matchup with the Cast and Comets. We'll talk a little bit more about that here uh, in a second. But uh, you know, big big two games here to start the season for for Rochester. Yeah. So yeah, big in a lot of ways. Yeah, this week. Um, yeah, very interesting first two games, and just mm -hmm. that first four games when you tack on Northwestern and Northwood next week. That's uh, yeah. That's a very interesting four game, yeah, four series of four games before you get near that conference play. Yeah. So as we as we move on, we talk about mm -hmm. Cast and they're going to start off their season on the road at Argus tonight. Um, two second year coaches, Josh Douglas for the Comets and Scott Jennings for the Argus Dragons, and you know Caston uh, Caston won that one last year, thirty seven twenty one. It was kind of the start, right, of uh, of the comments yeah. uh, where they uh, would end up in the season. I mean, yeah. a really good year. And I talked with Josh Douglas the other day. I said, were you surprised that you won 15 games? He goes, yeah, I was. He mm -hmm. goes, yeah, because, and he talked about, man, we beat, we beat a Rochester team right off the bat who wound up winning their two-way sectional. Like, mm -hmm. like, like that, that was just a pleasant surprise about how we, and it, and it just, I think they kind of fed off that for the rest of the season. Mm-hmm. Because remember, they won five games two years ago, and then 15 last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, you wondered, too. I mean, everybody knew, if you if you follow girls' basketball, everybody had seen that group, mm -hmm. you know, as they were going through, or at least I had quite a bit, because they were going through junior high. And you're like, okay, but what can they do? What kind of a difference can they make, you know, coming in as freshmen? Can they make an instant impact and way they did yeah and you know now as they, as they move into their sophomore years now they're going to have uh for Caston, you know they're they're going to miss their their post player uh lane oliver right jordan Klinger graduated and and lane oliver they both graduated yeah, yeah so yes. those were mm -hmm. you know so they're they're going to have to find uh an answer inside but uh brianna yarber has really come a long way over the summer i've seen her play a few times yeah. in, the, in the fall and uh, you know, so if they can find that mix of inside mm -hmm. outside, they're going to be dangerous. 
I, was, I asked Josh Douglas, I said, how has Isabel Scales improved as a player since last year? He goes, her court vision. He goes, she sees some passes and can make some passes that she just didn't see last year. Mm -hmm. And he even said the same thing with Addison Zimpleman. And he said, it's kind of part of the process of just the game slows down for you as you go right, from, right. as you just get more experienced. And uh, another, another girl he really, uh, Coach Douglas really praised, is Bailey Harness. Mm -hmm. And she's really worked on her game. I mean, she was kind of the defensive stopper on this team, but I, she, it sounds like she could be more involved offensively this year. Yeah. And, yeah, Yarber is another player that he talked about. But, you know, she's in a lot of ways she's just this great role player because she can handle the ball and she can play good defender. But, yeah, she might score 10 points mm -hmm. or 12 points on a, on a given night. Yeah. And uh, he, Maddie Smith, he just raved about Maddie. He goes, he just said for, for Maddie, it's just a matter of self-confidence. And if she can, she's just so athletic. If she can just finish around the rim and just make those, you know, short layup shots and close-in shots, she could – he thinks she could average 15, 20 points a game. I mean, mm -hmm. he just said, he, he just told Maddie, he goes, Maddie, it's up to you. You need to do it now. Mm -hmm. So to give it, to have such an athletic wing player, that's really going to help them a lot. To have really two athletic wing players in Harness and Smith, that really, to go along with the guards, boy, that, that makes them a formidable lineup. And, you know, a huge game to start the season uh, on the road at Argus at Phil Waybright Gymnasium. And, you know, Coach Jennings, I think, was – uh, struggled last year. Obviously, they started off 0 and 7. You know, Argus's front part of their season for for years had been pretty light. You know, Caston yeah. and then Bethany Christian, and then you know, going into that third game of the year, Triton was kind of their first test. And mm -hmm. last year, I mean, the script flipped big time. Obviously, with Caston being so much improved, and then Bethany Christian. You know, I think they won 15 games last year. They won 17 games 17 last games year, yeah. last year. So I mean, they were much improved and yeah. So when we talked about Caston's freshman guards. How about Bethany Christian's freshman guards, Mariah Stoltzfus and Zoe Willems? Mm -hmm. They were the, Stoltzfus might be Division One. She's she is really good. Yeah, and she so, is really good. So they're going to have uh, you know Argus is going to have their hands full as back to back and yeah. uh, you know Coach Jennings' numbers are a little low this year, so they're going to be doing. Uh, I know tonight mm -hmm. they're going to be doing a half of a JV game. Yeah, they're down and to then, twelve. Yeah, eleven. 11. Okay. Yeah, I was up there yesterday. That's what Mr. Medich said. Okay. And one of them uh, is her. So, um, yeah, so, but there's some good things going on at Argus over the summer. And obviously when you got Lizzie Edmonds, who just signed, you know, to play mm -hmm. at Holy Cross as your linchpin, your, your, you know, she's not only a big, but she can handle the ball. She's going to mm -hmm. rebound to, you know, almost a double-double level. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of good things to build around. And, she, and she's really kind of extended her shooting range out to about 12 to 15 feet. So, um, you know, Coach Jennings, he talks a lot about just getting more of a more leadership out of Lizzie as opposed more to... More vocal. Yeah, just mm -hmm. becoming a vocal leader. And then the key for Lizzie is, has always been just staying out of foul trouble, which has been kind of an issue for her. And uh, the Amanda Fajardo is the girl that you talked about who's injured. Mm -hmm. She uh, suffered an ankle injury earlier this week in practice. She's... Lizzie's backup and Fajardo has really come a long way sure. during the off season to get to the point where she's not full time varsity. She's really impressed the coaching staff, so it stinks for her to, to hurt her ankle that way. Um, but from a ball handling standpoint, uh, you know Emma Dunlap. We know that Emma Dunlap and Bella Stoltz can can handle that position. I mean, they they were thrown right into the fire last year. Emma had not played much point guard, and all of a sudden you're playing. Right off the bat, you're playing Cast and you're playing Bethany Christian, mm -hmm. you're playing Judson, you're playing Rochester. Mm -hmm. You know, she she just got you're playing. Tri I mean, it was just. I think they played even Valley. They there was a game yep. Valley that was thrown onto the schedule. I yep. mean, you're playing all of a sudden Sydney Wagner's right in your face. I mean, it's just it was just a tough start for them, but they have improved a lot. They've gotten stronger. Um, you know, both Emma Dunlap and Bella Stoltz. It's been interesting to follow their development. They're both juniors. They're both five nine. Um, Emma's maybe more of a guard type. Bella's maybe more of an all-around type. She they really worked on her post game. Mm -hmm. Throw it in her to the post, but she also can shoot that mid-range jump shot. She's worked on that a lot. So, yeah, um, c c talking with Coach Jennings, he's very out, very excited about his team's uh, roster. He wants to play man-to-man -man defense, so we'll see how much they can go. They, they really improved on the defensive end as the season went along last year, and they got a lot of girls who can shoot. Yeah, I mean, Emma's worked on her shot. Carly Miller can hit the outside shot. Mm -hmm. Um you know, one that you haven't mentioned, uh, sophomore Samantha Redinger. Yeah. Uh, you know, she is, uh, you know, we saw her, I think, 
kind of come into her own at the Pioneer. She can shoot game. too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we talked about her defensive game. She's she's the third leading returning scorer after Edmonds and Dunlap. Yeah, yeah. She she kind of held the uh, kept the uh, Dragons in that game against Pioneer last year down at Pioneer. Yeah. So so and she's yeah she'll take on any defensive assignment you give her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, looking forward to her. And then, uh, you know, Morgan Barkas coming in, I think we'll be able to help him out with some things as a freshman. So, you know, and they're they're going to be more reliant on some of those younger players than, say, a Rochester and, and uh, Scott's brother, Brian, will have to. Yeah. So. But, again, you know, we talk about, again, Argus plays cast, and obviously we're very interested in that game from our standpoint. But in a lot of ways, the biggest game this week, I would argue, is that Bethany Christian Argus game at Argus on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. Because that's a conference game right off the bat. Yeah. And whoever wins that will be kind of in the driver's seat for the conference moving forward. Right. Because those are those are probably your two top. We we think those are the two best teams. Yes. So, again, is it the? uh, There are other good matchups this week, but I think that's the game that might have the most importance. Where we're still talking about that in January and February. Right. Right. Uh, Tippecanoe Valley is going to open up their season against Bremen. Bremen already has one game under their belt. Um, I don't know if they want to admit it or not. They had a rough one against Mishawaka Marion. but yeah. Mishawaka Marion is ranked number three in Class 3A. Yeah, most teams are going to have rough ones. Yeah, Coach, Coach Scott at Mishawaka Marion does a great job there. He's a great yeah. coach. Chris Kindig, in his 12th season, he took over for uh, Gary Teal. I mean, so he's been there for, for quite a while and Obviously, has uh, had some success there, leading the team to that uh, state runner-up mm-hmm. in 2015, right? Right. And uh, you know, this is a game that Valley won 50 to 45 last year, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's a good uh, test right out of the gate. You know, it's a it's not a, a world-beating Bremen team, so you would hope that they can get the win. But you also got to look at Valley. Uh, you know, they graduated a lot. So they're going to have a lot of new pieces in, in places that they aren't used to. Sydney Wagner led Valley in scoring, rebounding, assists, and steals last year. That's it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably minutes played, too. <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, we forget about and we forget about Sid as a rebounder. Mm-hmm. I mean, she would get six, seven rebounds a game. I mean, she was, you know, she was just like the, uh, she was like the Russell Westbrook of the TRC. I mean, she was just had so much energy out there, and then, you know, she had worked on her outside shooting so much, and, you know, she wound up averaging 19 points a game and got to over 1,000 in her final game, so it's going to be a different Looking Valley team, but uh, Coach Kindick said, hey, we're kind of a, we're a good shooting team, but we're kind of a live by the three, die by the three team, maybe mm-hmm. at this start of the season. Caden Smallout is a really good shooter. Lily Alt's a really good shooter. You know, they're, they're going to be, you know, they're, you know, they're going to be relied on a lot, but uh, in terms of guard play, you know Molly Moriarty is gonna, and Chesney Miller are both going to be stepping up this year. Molly's mm-hmm. a junior, Chesney's a sophomore. Mm-hmm. Um, they're both been handling the ball a lot, but they're both really um, going to help on the defensive end as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you know who's going to who's going to step up again? We talk about Sydney, but Haley Backus also graduated. Haley had that injury plagued senior season. Right. But when she was healthy, I mean they 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 just relied on her so much. I mean. She was just so revered by her teammates, and she was a really good rebounder and shot blocker, and gave them a post presence. Mm-hmm. Is Corinna Styles a post player like Haley Backus? Probably not. I mean, she's maybe. I mean, she can, she she can play a little bit in the post, but she might be most comfortable shooting that fifteen foot jump shot. And then you've got Mercedes Snap, who is she's the only senior, and you know she'll be helping out. You know, they'll, they'll need they'll need her. I don't think she'll be a big time scorer, but they'll need her to get some rebounds. And you know, just be a defensive presence out there. Yeah. Coach Kindig wants to play more man-to-man defense. I mean, we saw Valley play a lot of zone last year, and it looked weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, coach Kindig likes to get after it defensively. Right. He's right. not a sit back in his zone type of coach, but he kind of had to last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll see if they can if they can be more. Uh, they can cause more turnovers and cause more havoc defensively. Yeah. And I think with with Molly and Chesney, I mean, they might be the keys in terms of getting that getting some steals and getting that break going. Yeah. So Valley hosting Bremen tonight, the last of four games that we're going to have on. I just mentioned three freshmen on the Valley varsity roster. Lydia Craig, Emma's younger sister. Uh-huh. Uh, Carly Snyder, and uh, what did I forget here? I forget. Yeah. Craig, Snyder, and there's a third. I'm sorry. Uh, drawing a blank. But, yeah, he's got three freshmen who might up, might up getting some varsity minutes as well. Yeah. Um, their numbers... 
kind of midway through the pack. I mean, they got good but not great numbers, I yeah, guess. Yeah, around 15, yeah. Uh, 13 to 15, somewhere yeah. in there. He's, they're going to have to juggle some minutes because they want to get some of the young kids, get, get sure. them some, some, some JV minutes and just get their... Right, you know, build up the kind. Of, that's kind of the way he's he's handled it in previous years, and I, yeah. I expect nothing different this year. Yeah. Um, the other uh, game, the last game we'll have on for tonight: Winnemac hosting Valpo. Cole Croft in his fifth season. This was a close game last year. Valpo won thirty six thirty one, but this is a Winnemac team that uh, you know missing their leading uh, career mm-hmm. leading rebounder and shot blocker. Right, Maggie had both of those. Yeah. Uh, and they're going to be quite a bit smaller than they were. Smaller, but I asked Coach Croft, I said, well, how will this change your style of play, or will your style of play be similar? He said it'll be similar, mm-hmm. and, and you know, that's just kind of the identity, I think, of, of Winnemag girls basketball. And when you, uh, you know, I asked him kind of uh, about roles for different players, and he talks a lot about defense, about mm-hmm. about how they can be a, a better defender, about be, be a better defender, how they can help. Like, like when I asked him about Kingsley Croft, you know, he talks, I mean, I mean Obviously, Kingsley's going to have to score. We kind of know that, but Kingsley might also have to defend the other team's best player, mm-hmm. which is maybe not something that she didn't have to do last year. Maybe that was something that Aubrey Gearhart had to get to do last year. Well, right. now Kingsley will have to step up defensively. Kaya Campbell will have to handle the ball, but um, you know she might have to be expected to score. But she'll, you know, she'll have some big defensive responsibilities. Um, you know, like I asked him about Piper Link. I know Piper can score. She's very, you know, she's she can be adept to get to score. But we need her to defend. So right. it's just that defensive mindset that Winnemac is is known for. Uh, that that's not going to change. But he talks about yeah, we spend a lot of time in practice on rebounding, yeah. about boxing yeah. out, about right. holding your about holding holding off your box out, finding a player and getting those rebounds. I think that's going to be a key for Winnemac, especially because we know. I mean, I I would certainly I, I don't know a whole lot about Valpo, but I would imagine Valpo's going to be, you know. Have some height. I would, yeah, I would mm-hmm. think a four A school. And um, I mean, Candy Wilson's always coached good bigs, yeah. good post players over the yeah. years. You know, one thing that you know if you're an opposing coach, if you're going to Winnemac or they're coming to your places, it's going to be a mess. I mean, defensively, it's going to be tough uh, to get anything going on your offense. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, you can see that thirty six thirty one score. You know that, that that indicates that as well. You know, a lot of a lot of games with Winnemac. Are in the 30s, yeah, and Coach Croft would even prefer in the 20s. Mm-hmm. So you you know that yeah. that's a going to yeah. be a hard to get your offense going. Right. I asked Coach Croft about Ella Gearhart. He goes, "She'll do anything it takes to win," mm-hmm. and that's kind of the, yeah. the mentality and culture that he wants. Yeah. And then Kate Collins has come out for basketball this year. She's a senior, and mm-hmm. you know she's she's certainly athletic. She hasn't played basketball since she was in middle school. We'll see if she might make a contribution. Yeah. Uh, also playing tonight, but not going to be on the air, uh, Culver uh, Community going across town taking on Culver Girls Academy. Uh, the academy under first-year coach Bill Murchie lost the other night, 43-47, to Morgan Township. Uh, Shane Lowry coming into his second season. They're going to have to find somebody that can handle the ball. Obviously yeah. with uh, Maddie Shedro, who was their main ball handler last year, graduating that's going to be the, probably the number one thing for the Cavaliers. Right. We got the Culver roster yesterday because I didn't know who was and who wasn't on the team, but they list five freshmen on their varsity roster but only one senior. The one senior is Lizzie Pugh. Um, but they list five freshmen when you talk about Ashley Pugh, uh, Bryn Barrett, Cassie Banks, uh, uh, Livy Overmeyer, and Amaya Williams. Mm-hmm. Um, Livy is, going to, is varsity only. The other uh, four are listed on both the JV and varsity rosters. Mm-hmm. So it's not as experienced a team as we thought, but it is uh, you know, pretty youth-oriented. We'll see who can, uh, you know, can handle the ball. You, know, the, you look at their juniors, you know, they've got Kaylee Hamilton and Rose Peterson and Maisie McEwen and Lucy Obermeyer. Lucy is really the only one of the four who has a lot of varsity experience coming in. So mm-hmm. we'll see if kind of the, you know, we, go, we always talk about the junior year being kind of that year you kind of, Coming to your own as a player, we'll see who in the junior class will do that, or will it be some of the younger players? Yeah, you know, Sieber and Garland got quite a bit of playing time last year as freshmen. Now they're sophomores. Will will they take a step forward? Right, and you know that group of freshmen you talk about. You know, obviously I know them pretty well as well, and uh, you know it's going to be, you know, throw them into the fire and, and test, you know, tested by fire and, mm-hmm. and forged by fire, I guess, but. 
uh, we saw them, you know, do some good things on the volleyball court. A lot of those girls, and, and it's going to be the same group of girls, and they're going to have to, uh, you know, answer the bell for yeah. the uh, Cavaliers on the basketball floor. I haven't seen them play much basketball. Boy, I saw Maya Williams on the soccer field. She's a really talented athlete. Mm -hmm. and she's listed at 5'9". Mm -hmm. Nobody on this team is smaller than 5'4", but nobody's taller than 5'9". Mm -hmm. And when I see a team like that, I'm kind of wondering if they're going to be a defensively versatile team are they going to be a switch on everything type of team right where if they just if, if a team screens you just switch automatically and, right because they could play a switching man if they if they wanted to i, I would think but i don't know if that's coach lowry's thing i haven't talked to him lately but i'll be i'll be curious to see what kind of defensive team they turn out to be yeah because there seems to be some length with those uh some of those freshmen yeah They're kind of girls with long arms who can really maybe cause some havoc uh, yeah especially if you as you bring the ball up the court I would think the the strength factor, obviously, you know, being freshmen, a lot of them, they're, you know, they still got to build up some muscle and mm -hmm. some endurance there. But uh, definitely some some good good athletes, you know, for yeah. for Coach Lowry and and then who, just who can make shots on this team? Yeah, because uh, again, we talked last year about Culver and Girlbath. There there's some structure there to what they want to do. Mm -hmm. There absolutely is with Coach Lowry and Coach Barron. They, they there's a lot more story. They're they're getting shots. Now can they make shots? Mm -hmm. But their schedule is, I think their schedule is, it's a good schedule. It's not, they're, obviously the Hoosier North is just a very, very tough conference. But you look at their non-conference, these are good non-conference games, really competitive games. They don't they don't need to be scheduling 3A and 4A teams right. for non-conference. They're playing good teams that they can compete with and build that confidence with when you've got a young team. Yeah. When you've yeah, got five freshmen and two sophomores. That's what you need to do is build mm -hmm. that confidence and, you know, it, it may be something, you know, in a couple of years if they, you know, really show some uh, promise that maybe you can try and get a few few more of those, you know, tougher teams on your schedule. Right. And as I said, when I saw them play volleyball, these freshmen are competitors. Sure. They are competitors. Well, you know anybody with the last name of Barrett. I mean, if you, if you know uh, Brad or, uh, uh, you know, his wife, uh, you know the the, the kids are going to be competitive as as all get out as well. I mean, because mm -hmm. they're about as competitive as you can get. And you know, Pew as, as well. You know, she did some some really nice things. She's she's probably one of the best uh, freshmen when you talk about that freshman group as far as uh, shooting ability. Mm -hmm. So I would look for her to do some some good things. And Libby Obermeyer is, uh, you know, she's got some size, and and mm -hmm. I don't know that she's done growing yet. So mm -hmm. she, you know, maybe get another inch or two on her and get a little muscle on her and, and she's going to be a solid player as well mm -hmm. so it's been a, been a lot of really good overmeyers through culver community uh, over the years but uh she's definitely the tallest one of them <laughs> so all right uh so that's all of our games for tonight and then on saturday obviously we talked about rochester at caston bethany christian and argus the obviously the one i'm really interested in is an early game and the pioneer panthers going to be opening up their season against Tri-County. And I don't know, have you have you had a chance to talk to Coach Brooke yet? Uh, not yet. I will very soon. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I do have their roster, and it's interesting. Um, I wasn't expecting four seniors. Obviously, I knew about Haley Kripe, mm -hmm. and I knew Macy Baker, but I didn't know that Kennedy Corn was playing basketball. Mm -hmm. So that gives them a fourth senior to go along with, you know, Kripe Baker and Maggie Steffel. Mm -hmm. So, and, sh and sh you know, Kennedy Corn is listed at uh, 5'10", mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, you know, Mandy Weisenberger is playing basketball, too. She's listed at 5'10". She's a junior, mm -hmm. so I'm kind of wondering uh, uh, what I hope to ask Coach Brooke about when I get to see him, when I get to talk to him, is, you know, who's going to be the post, or do are you going to have a true post player the way uh, Olivia Brooke and Madison Blickenstaff were last year? Yeah, I'm kind of curious about that, too. Obviously, you know, the dy dynamic of that team is going to change a lot, you know, with the graduation of the three starters. Uh, you know, two of them, like you said, really, really talented post players with Brooke and uh, Blickenstaff and then, you know, Joe Walker. You know, we saw uh, Brooklyn Borges last year, you know, come in, and, and she basically at six foot was playing the wing spot. Mm -hmm. uh, really good three-point shooter. Will she stay in that wing spot? Um, you know, she's she's been battling that high ankle sprain that she suffered in uh, volleyball. So will she stay in that wing spot? Will she move down into a post position? You know, you also got sophomore Kylie Adinger, who uh, I've heard is, is really having a good preseason camp, mm -hmm. uh, kind of establishing some things there as well. And, 
you know, obviously the big yeah. the big news for Coach Brooke is, you know, Ashlyn is healthy. Mm-hmm. You know, can she stay healthy? Yeah. She's healthy to start the season. She hasn't been there yet, you know. So that's the big thing for the, the Panthers. You know, you put Kripe and, yeah. and Ashlyn Brooke together in that backcourt. I mean, really? Yeah. 40 plus percent from three for both of them. Right. And 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 that's another team you just can't press. No, you just no, don't even think about no, it. So, no. uh the other the other kind of big picture thing and I, I know having Ashlyn back is a big deal uh, to start a season, but the whole the whole junior class, what can you get out of the junior class? Mm-hmm. Cuz really, I mean, you know, Bell Blick and staff is hurt from mm-hmm. what we've heard. Mm-hmm. Ashland, but then Weisenberger and Allison McGrew are your other juniors, so you know, we can they get more out of the junior class than we thought, or are they going to have to go to the young, that younger group? When you talk about the freshmen and sophomores, like you know, like Gracie Hopper, like Brooklyn, like Kylie Edinger, like McKenna Stricker, mm-hmm. who's fresh, was the only freshman on the varsity roster. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it, it's going to be really interesting. Um, you know, obviously, when you start with with those two out top, and I, I'm I'm really curious. You know, as not only a broadcaster but a parent. <laughs> Uh, I'm just kind of curious to, to see, you know, because you, you run through the scenarios in your head and you're like, you know, who will play where and how will he play them? And, you know, so I'm, I'm kind of curious as well. I think rebounding is going to be big for this team. Mm-hmm. I mean, Olivia and Madison, you just mm-hmm. didn't have to worry about rebounding last year and because of their propensity to get rebounds, you could get your fast break going. Mm-hmm. And that just, and their, their running game was just hard to, to deal with for a lot of teams. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you can take that for granted this time. Yeah, and who's going to be that stopper? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it, it just uh, Joe Walker. Uh, you never really said much about her. You never really noticed a lot about her, but she was just that the ninja. presence. <laughs> yeah, the ninja. she was that presence on the floor, and mm-hmm. and you know, all the way up till the last play of her of her career. Yeah, you then, know, playing. Then, then you noticed her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, even her last year, uh, you know, she came on as a scorer. Mm-hmm. You know, there was games where you couldn't leave her open anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if she had an open 15-footer, she was taking it. And a lot of times she was hitting it. Mm-hmm. So there's going to be a, a lot of uh, new pieces to the puzzle. But if you're Coach Brooke, you got to feel pretty good about the pieces that you have in the house. I mean, it's not like the cupboard's bare. Right. It's the, it's the, it's the roles mm-hmm. and then the, the rebounding. And then I think the third thing is defensively, What's going to be their defensive identity? Because you can't win a state championship playing just one defense. Right. And with Pioneer, we saw, again, just look at the Ligoti game. They really shut down Ligoti with their 32 defense in the first half of that game. But then Ligoti made the adjustments at yeah. halftime, and then Pioneer had to go back to the man. Mm-hmm. And Pioneer can, I mean, they played some great 2-3 at times. So it's, what are they going to do well defensively? Can they play multiple defenses effectively? Mm-hmm. Because you're you're going to have to make some adjustments because other teams are going to adjust to you. Yeah, and you know the the game on Saturday is really interesting too because you know the history with Pioneer and Tri County obviously being you know former conference foes, but uh, they haven't played since February of uh, 20 when Pioneer won in the sectional pretty easily. Um, you know, I'm interested to see from Tri County standpoint. You know, they had a really good eighth grade class last year. What kind of an impact will those girls make, you know, on that Tri County team, you know, coming in this year as freshmen? Because mm-hmm. that's the only team that the uh, current group of freshmen from Pioneer lost to in seventh and eighth grade. Yeah, I mean, they were really good. So uh, will they be a uh, casting type, you know, where they come in and make a really uh, quick impact, or will it take a little bit longer for them to, you know, acclimate to the varsity rigors? So, yeah, I'm really interested to, you know, get things going, obviously. This is going to be a a fun girls' basketball season. You know, the other thing about Pioneer, obviously, is they're playing in the 2A level this year. Right. And same sectional with the Rochester Zebras. I think you're going to take a step back and look throughout the entire state. 2A is going to be the class that's going to be really interesting because you've got Pioneer and Ligoti. They're they're both in 2A now. (laughs) So, uh, first of all, who's going to get out of 1A? Right. And then how do Pioneer and Ligoti affect the way that the 2A landscape, especially now that Linton Stockton is in 3A? Right, even though they're in the 2A pool still. <laughs> but, yeah. No, it, uh, yeah, and, and there's so high many. High school sports people, it's just so complicated. Yeah. 
And, and then you look at, you know, <laughs> as, as you look across the 2A landscape in the north, you know, you talk about Tipton. Mm-hmm. You know, I think they started off number one. Started off number one? Uh, you know, they had a tremendous postseason last year, and they were very young. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you you got to look at them as kind of being the team to beat. But then you also look at Carroll, who's in the sectional with Rochester and Pioneer. Um, you look, you know, Frankton is a, is always good in, in 2A. I mean, uh, you can never count North Judson out. You know, you don't know what they're going to be without Lillian Frazier. But, I mean, yeah, 2A. I, uh, I, think, Win- I think Winchester will be pretty competitive. Oh, my gosh, yes. Uh, I, I don't know how good Frankton will be, but I know they'll be very competitive. Mm-hmm. And, again, the regionals on their home floor, I know that. Yeah. Uh, did did Winchester, are they still, because there was, wasn't there a north-south thing with them? Are they, they're still playing out of the north? They're in the north, okay. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's a team that, uh, you know, is going to have to be handled. If you're going to go far in the in the two A section, yeah, you know. and, and Clinton Prairie is so well coached. I know they suffered some graduation losses, but they'll be they'll be very solid. Yeah, and and LCC is going down to one A. Yeah, yeah. So they'll be they'll be back in the the one A level. So yeah, they'll be in the two A poll probably. Yeah. <laughs> so that'll that'll be interesting in itself, mm-hmm. you know, um, for the one A schools. And yeah. you, you know, as you talk, you know, one right. A teams with some aspirations like yeah. Caston. Yeah. You know, now all of a sudden there's LCC again. Right. And what, what can I do? <clears throat> and, of course, LCC is playing the volleyball state championship, so they might get off to a little bit of a late start. We'll see. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we saw LCC a couple times last year. Uh, you know, obviously Rochester went over there, and then uh, they mm-hmm. went to Pioneer. And not a real tall team. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and they got some, some nice freshmen. You know, I don't know how much varsity time they'll get, but there's a, there's a pretty nice group of freshmen coming in for them as well. And, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. So, well, we actually still have some time left, Al. You believe that? You, you, four minutes yeah, of uh, four minutes yeah, of yeah. Uh, Val. You can you can fill in with uh, deep thoughts. Huh. Any any more? Yeah, uh, uh, boy. I, I I wanted to talk about Drake Bowen because I think that I think that was very interesting. It's interesting that we're talk, we're talking about a linebacker from Andrean. I mean, these are. Like national recruiting experts talking about him, that, 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 I thought that was very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I did not realize yeah. that he was a five-star recruit. I didn't. I didn't realize that either. Yeah. I wanted to talk about Valley football too. I asked Coach Moriarty. I said, "Is your team in a better position to play with these great teams now than you were a year ago?" And he said, "Definitely yes." Mm-hmm. So I wanted to point that out because, again, you look at it. Well, they lost forty-one twenty-four last year and twenty-nine to nothing this year, and it's like, will they just ever get by? No, he feels like they definitely made some some progress mm-hmm. there. So I, I wanted to mention that as well. And yeah, and uh, wrestling practice started this past week. I'm really yeah. curious to see what Rochester is going to look like. This is a team that I think they should have about four or five kids ranked in the top 20 in their respective weight classes. So uh, they've been practicing now for a week. So I don't want to forget about them. Plus, we got Basley Owens at Valley coming back as yeah. state qualifier. Yeah. Uh, Winnemac, they won their conference two years in a row. It should be a really exciting wrestle. I, I think I've said this before. I don't think there's ever been a more anticipated wrestling season than coming up. Yeah, no, for our area anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, wrestling. And then uh, a week uh, coming up on Monday, then mm-hmm. boys basketball practice is yeah. going to start. And, you know, it's going to be curious to see, you know, obviously Rochester with, with all the graduation they had last year, you know, they're going to have a, a different look and, and they're going to be quite a bit smaller. Mm-hmm. I think uh, about six one is about as tall as they're going to get and, uh, you know, the, the beginning of the season anyway. And so that's going to be interesting to see how that goes. And Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be, yeah, it's hard to get a read on who, who the good boys basketball teams in the area are going to be, but you surely have to like Caston's chances, I mean, mm-hmm. given who they've got back from a team that's won two straight sectionals. Yeah. All right, so coming up tonight on RTC TV 4, Channel 4 uh, tonight, we're going to have Rochester and North Judson. We'll start with the JV at 6.30, so tune in for that. Um, Caston and Argus, that will be web only. Valley and Bremen will be web only, and Winnemac and Valpo will be on web only as well. All that can be found at rtc4.com. Tomorrow night on IHSAA TV, you can actually go to RTC4 and go to, uh, you know, there'll actually be a link there to take you to IHSAA. But we'll have um, Pioneer at LaVille for a sectional championship, and then we'll also have Culver at North Judson for a sectional championship 
both of those games will be on. Pioneer starts at 7, and the Judson and Culver game starts at 7.30. So, yeah, the Pioneer Little game starts at 7. I want to reemphasize that because I don't believe 7, yeah. Well, I have 6.30 because that's when the pregame. Okay. Pregame starts pre-game at 6.30. Pregame starts at 6.30. Yeah. All right, that's going to wrap it up, and we thank you for tuning in, talking sports with Val. We'll be back next week. We'll talk some more sports with Val. Thanks for tuning in.